Rad Nation, today we're talking about how to go from dose length product to effective dose, which is in millisieverts, using a simple calculator. So on your CT scanner, you'll typically get an output that's a dose length product in your dose report. And if you want to have an estimate in millisieverts, you can use this simple calculator. We're gonna go through some examples right now. To the calculator, so go to howradiologyworks.com. Click on the calculators in the upper right hand side. Go on down just a little bit. Click on the calculator that's DLP to millisieverts. And this is our calculator where on the left hand side you have your input parameters and on the right hand side you have your output. So first off the example we're gonna do is a routine brain CT. So imagine an adult comes in, a routine brain CT representative dose could be about 50 milligray. And for round numbers, let's say the distance is 20 centimeters. So the DLP that the system is gonna report is going to be 1,000 milligray centimeters. Then if we have 1,000 milligray centimeters and we have an adult and then the area of interest is a head, you can see that the effective dose is around two millisieverts right here. So millisieverts is the effective dose. If you put that in context, three millisieverts is the background radiation on average you'll get in the United States. So you can see for a non-contrast CT, a representative dose is about two thirds of the background radiation. If a one-year-old comes in for a CT scan, the radiation dose that would be used would typically be lower. Maybe 25 milligray would be representative and the distance that would be scanned would be less. So maybe 10 centimeters. So if we say 250 milligray centimeters is what the scanner would output, you can see if we select a one-year-old and a head, you can see the effective dose is it's still below two millisieverts. An adult comes in for a non-contrast chest scan, talking round numbers, not necessarily matching exactly what you would have in the clinic, but you may have 10 milligray absorbed dose and the distance may be 50 centimeters just for round numbers so that we have 500 milligray centimeters that the system would report. See, for this one, the effective dose now is seven milligray, so a little bit more than two years of background radiation. In modern scanners, you can often do these at lower doses, but what we wanna get across here is you can see as we change from the head to the chest, the weighting factors went up. In general, the brain is less radiosensitive than the organs in the chest. Then another interesting example is the case of cardiac CT wherein again, we're scanning in the chest. And this is an exam that used to take a very high radiation dose because on older systems where the coverage wasn't as high, you typically have to scan in order to get reliable results. You'd have to scan a helical scan at a very low pitch. So you were actually repeatedly scanning the same area or getting redundant data of the same area in the heart in order to get reliable measurements. In wide coverage systems, you can image the whole heart in just a single rotation or less. So you can avoid the redundant data or all the overlaps. For example, these are images from a modern CT scanner. And these were generated with a CTDI of 18 milligray centimeter, effective dose of 0.25 millisieverts. This is just showing you that the CT technology can also lead to reductions in radiation dose. If you haven't already, hop on over to howardiologyworks.com, check out this calculator. So check out our other video that tells you what's going on behind the scenes in this calculator.